Nehemiah Chapter 1 The Words of Nehemiah the Son of Hakaliah Now it came about in the month Kislev, in the twentieth year, that I myself happened to be in Shushan the castle. Then Hanani, one of my brothers, came in, he and other men from Judah, and I proceeded to ask them about the Jews, those who had escaped, who had been left over of the captivity, and also about Jerusalem. Accordingly they said to me, Those left over, who have been left over from the captivity, there in the jurisdictional district, are in a very bad plight and in reproach. And the wall of Jerusalem is broken down, and its very gates have been burned with fire. And it came about that as soon as I heard these words, I sat down and began to weep and mourn for days. And I was continually fasting and praying before the God of the heavens. And I went on to say, Ah, Jehovah, the God of the heavens, the God great and fear-inspiring, keeping the covenant and loving-kindness toward those loving him and keeping his commandments, please let your ear become attentive and your eyes opened to listen to the prayer of your servant, which I am praying before you today, day and night, concerning the sons of Israel, your servants, all the while making confession concerning the sins of the sons of Israel with which we have sinned against you. We have sinned, both I and the house of my father. We have unquestionably acted corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments and the regulations and the judicial decisions that you gave in command to Moses, your servant. Remember, please, the word that you commanded Moses, your servant, saying, should you for your part act unfaithfully, I for my part shall scatter you among the peoples. When you will have returned to me and kept my commandments and done them, though your dispersed people should happen to be at the end of the heavens, from there I shall collect them and certainly bring them to the place that I have chosen to have my name reside there. And there are your servants and your people whom you redeemed by your great power and by your strong hand. Ah, Jehovah, please, let your ear become attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who take delight in fearing your name. And please, do grant success to your servant today and make him an object of pity before this man. Now I myself happen to be cupbearer to the king. Chapter 2 and it came about in the month Nisan, in the twentieth year of Artaxerxes the king, that wine was before him. And I, as usual, took up the wine and gave it to the king. But never had I happened to be gloomy before him. So the king said to me, Why is your face gloomy when you yourself are not sick? This is nothing but a gloominess of heart. At this I became very much afraid. Then I said to the king, let the king himself live to time indefinite. Why should not my face become gloomy when the city, the house of the burial places of my forefathers, is devastated and its very gates have been eaten up with fire? In turn the king said to me, What is this that you are seeking to secure? At once I prayed to the God of the heavens. After that I said to the king, if to the king it does seem good, and if your servant seems good before you, that you would send me to Judah, to the city of the burial places of my forefathers, that I may rebuild it. At this the king said to me, as his queenly consort was sitting beside him, How long will your journey come to be, and when will you return? So it seemed good before the king that he should send me, when I gave him the appointed time. And I went on to say to the king, If to the king it does seem good, let letters be given me to the governors beyond the river, that they may let me pass until I come to Judah. Also a letter to Asaph, the keeper of the park that belongs to the king, that he may give me trees to build with timber the gates of the castle that belongs to the house, and for the wall of the city and for the house into which I am to enter. So the king gave them to me, according to the good hand of my God upon me. Eventually I came to the governors beyond the river, and gave them the letters of the king. Moreover, the king sent with me chiefs of the military force and horsemen. 
when Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the servant, the Ammonite, got to hear of it, then it seemed to them something very bad that a man had come to seek something good for the sons of Israel. At length I came to Jerusalem, and I continued there for three days. Then I rose up by night, I and a few men with me, and I did not tell a man what my God was putting into my heart to do for Jerusalem, and there was no domestic animal with me except the domestic animal on which I was riding. And I proceeded to go out by the valley gate by night, and in front of the fountain of the big snake, and to the gate of the ash heaps. And I was constantly examining the walls of Jerusalem, how they were broken down, and the gates of it had been eaten up by fire. And I went passing along to the fountain gate, and to the king's pool, and there was no place for the domestic animal under me to pass along. But I kept on ascending in the torrent valley by night, and I kept on examining the wall, after which I came back and entered by the valley gate, and so got back. And the deputy rulers themselves did not know where I had gone and what I was doing. And to the Jews and the priests and the nobles and the deputy rulers and the rest of the doers of the work, I had not yet told anything. Finally I said to them, You are seeing the bad plight in which we are, how Jerusalem is devastated and its gates have been burned with fire. Come, and let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem, that we may no longer continue to be a reproach. And I went on to tell them of the hand of my God, how it was good upon me, and also of the king's words that he had said to me. At this they said, Let us get up, and we must build. So they strengthened their hands for the good work. Now when Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the servant, the Ammonite, and Geshem the Arabian heard of it, they began to deride us, and look on us despisingly, and say, What is this thing that you are doing? Is it against the king that you are rebelling? However, I replied to them, and said to them, The God of the heavens is the one that will grant us success, and we ourselves, his servants, shall get up, and we must build. But you yourselves have no share, nor just claim, nor memorial in Jerusalem. Chapter 3 and Eliashib, the high priest, and his brothers, the priests, proceeded to get up and build the sheep gate. They themselves sanctified it, and went setting up its doors. And as far as the tower of Mia, they sanctified it, as far as the tower of Hananel. And at their side the men of Jericho did building, and at their side Zachar, the son of Imri, did building. And the fish gate was what the sons of Hassaneah built. They themselves timbered it, and then set up its doors, its bolts, and its bars. And at their side Merimoth, the son of Urijah, the son of Hakoz, did repair work. And at their side Meshalem, the son of Berechiah, the son of Meshezebel, did repair work. And at their side Zadok, the son of Baana, did repair work. And at their side the Tekoites did repair work, but their majestic ones themselves did not bring the back of their neck into the service of their masters. And the gate of the old city was what Joiada the son of Pasiah and Meshalem the son of Besodiah repaired. They themselves timbered it, and then set up its doors and its bolts and its bars. And at their side Melatiah the Gibeonite and Jadon the Meronothite did repair work, men of Gibeon and Mizpah, belonging to the throne of the governor beyond the river. At his side Aziel the son of Hahiah, goldsmiths, did repair work. And at his side, Hananiah, a member of the ointment mixers, did repair work. And they proceeded to flagstone Jerusalem as far as the broad wall. And at their side, Rephaiah, the son of Hur, a prince of half the district of Jerusalem, did repair work. And at their side, Jadeah, the son of Harumaph, did repair work in front of his own house. And at his side, Hattush, the son of Hashabniah, did repair work. Another measured section was what Malchijah, the son of Harim, and Hashab, the son of Pehath Moab, repaired, and also the tower of the bake ovens. And at his side, Shalom, the son of Halohesh, a prince of half the district of Jerusalem, did repair work, he and his daughters. The valley gate was what Hanan and the inhabitants of Zanoah repaired. They themselves built it, and then set up its doors, its bolts, and its bars, also a thousand cubits in the wall as far as the gate of the ash heaps. And the gate of the ash heaps was what Malchijah the son of Rechab, a prince of the district of Beth-Hakirim, repaired. 
he himself went building it, and setting up its doors, its bolts, and its bars. And the fountain gate was what Shalon, the son of Colhose, a prince of the district of Mizpah, repaired. He himself proceeded to build it, and to roof it over, and to set up its doors, its bolts, and its bars, and also the wall of the pool of the canal to the king's garden, and as far as the stairway that goes down from the city of David. After him, Nehemiah, the son of Esbach, a prince of half the district of Beth Sir, did repair work as far as in front of the burial places of David, and as far as the pool that had been made, and as far as the house of the mighty ones. After him, the Levites did repair work, Reham, the son of Bani, at his side Hashabiah, a prince of half the district of Kailah, did repair work for his district. After him their brothers did repair work, Bavai the son of Henadad, a prince of half the district of Kailah. And Ezer the son of Jeshua, a prince of Mizpah, proceeded at his side to repair another measured section in front of the going up to the armory at the buttress. After him Barak the son of Zabai worked with fervor, and repaired another measured section from the buttress as far as the entrance of the house of Eliashib, the high priest. After him, Merimoth, the son of Urijah, the son of Hakoz, repaired another measured section from the entrance of the house of Eliashib as far as the end of Eliashib's house. And after him, the priests, men of the Jordan district, did repair work. After them, Benjamin and Hashab did repair work in front of their own house. After them, Azariah, the son of Maasiah, the son of Ananiah, did repair work close by his own house. After him, Binuai, the son of Henadad, repaired another measured section, from the house of Azariah as far as the buttress, and as far as the corner. After him, Palal, the son of Uzai, did repair work, in front of the buttress and the tower that goes out from the king's house, the upper one that belongs to the courtyard of the guard. After him there was Pediah, the son of Perosh. And the Nethanim themselves happened to be dwellers in Ophel. They did repair work as far as in front of the water gate on the east and the protruding tower. After them the Tekoites repaired another measured section from in front of the great protruding tower as far as the wall of Ophel. Above the horse gate the priests did repair work, each one in front of his own house. After them Zadok the son of Immer did repair work in front of his own house. And after him, Shemaiah, the son of Shechaniah, the keeper of the east gate, did repair work. After him, Hananiah, the son of Shelemiah, and Hanan, the sixth son of Zalaph, repaired another measured section. After him, Meshalam, the son of Berechiah, did repair work in front of his own hall. After him, Malchijah, a member of the goldsmith guild, did repair work as far as the house of the Nethanim and the traders, in front of the inspection gate, and as far as the roof chamber of the corner. And between the roof chamber of the corner and the sheep gate, the goldsmiths and the traders did repair work. Chapter 4 Now it came about that as soon as Sanballat heard that we were rebuilding the wall, he became angry and highly offended, and he kept deriding the Jews. And he began to say before his brothers and the military force of Samaria, yes, he began to say, what are the feeble Jews doing? Will they depend upon themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they finish up in a day? Will they bring the stones to life out of the heaps of dusty rubbish when they are burned? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was alongside him, and he went on to say, Even what they are building, if a fox went up against it, he would certainly break down their wall of stones. Hear, O our God, for we have become an object of contempt, and make their reproach return upon their own head, and give them to the plunder in the land of captivity, and do not cover over their error and their sin from before you. Let it not be wiped out, for they have committed offence against the builders. So we kept building the wall, and the entire wall came to be joined together clear to half its height, and the people continued to have a heart for working. Now it came about that as soon as Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the repairing of the walls of Jerusalem had gone forward, for the gaps had started to be stopped up, they became very angry. And all of them began to conspire together to come and fight against Jerusalem and cause me disturbance. But we prayed to our God, 
and kept a guard posted against them day and night on account of them. And Judah began to say, The power of the burden-bearer has stumbled, and there is a great deal of rubbish, and we ourselves are not able to build on the wall. Moreover, our adversaries kept saying, They will not know, and they will not see, until we come right in among them, and we shall certainly kill them and put a stop to the work. And it came about that whenever the Jews dwelling close by them came in, they proceeded to say to us ten times, They will come up from all the places where you people will return to us. So I kept men posted at the lowest parts of the place behind the wall at the open places, and I kept the people posted by families with their swords, their lances, and their bows. When I saw their fear, I immediately rose and said to the nobles and the deputy rulers and the rest of the people, Do not be afraid on their account. Jehovah, the great and the fear-inspiring one, keep in your mind, and fight for your brothers, your sons and your daughters, your wives and your homes. Now it came about that as soon as our enemies heard that it had become known to us, so that the true God had frustrated their counsel, and we had all of us gone back to the wall, each one to his work. Yes, it came about that from that day forward, half of my young men were active in the work, and half of them were holding the lances, the shields, and the bows, and the coats of mail, and the princes were behind the whole house of Judah. As for the builders on the wall, and those who were carrying the burden of load-bearers, each one was active in the work with his one hand, while the other hand was holding the missile. And the builders were girded, each one with his sword upon his hip, while building, and the one to blow the horn was alongside me. And I proceeded to say to the nobles and the deputy rulers and the rest of the people, The work is large and extensive, and we are spread about upon the wall far apart from one another. In the place where you hear the sound of the horn, there is where you will collect yourselves together to us. Our God himself will fight for us. While we were active in the work, the other half of them also were holding the lances, from the ascending of the dawn until the stars came out. Besides, at that time I said to the people, Let the men spend the night, each one with his attendant, in the midst of Jerusalem, and they must become for us a guard by night and workers by day. As for me and my brothers and my attendants and the men of the guard who were behind me, we were not taking off our garments, each one having his missile in his right hand. Chapter 5 However, there came to be a great outcry of the people and their wives against their Jewish brothers. And there were those who were saying, Our sons and our daughters we are giving a security that we may get grain and eat and keep alive. And there were those who were saying, our fields and our vineyards and our houses we are giving a security that we may get grain during the food shortage. And there were those who were saying, We have borrowed money for the king's tribute on our fields and our vineyards, and now our flesh is the same as the flesh of our brothers. Our sons are the same as their sons. But here we are reducing our sons and our daughters to slaves, and there are some of our daughters already reduced. And there is no power in our hands while our fields and our vineyards belong to others. Now I became very angry as soon as I heard their outcry and these words. So my heart took consideration within me, and I began finding fault with the nobles and the deputy rulers, and went on to say to them, Usury is what you are exacting, each one from his own brother. Further, I arranged a great assembly on their account and I proceeded to say to them, We ourselves have bought back our own Jewish brothers who were sold to the nations, as far as it was in our power, and at the same time will you yourselves sell your own brothers, and must they be sold to us? At this they became speechless, and they did not find a word. And I went on to say, The thing that you are doing is not good. Is it not in the fear of our God that you should walk because of the reproach of the nations, our enemies? And also I, my brothers and my attendants, are giving money and grain on loan among them. Let us please leave off this lending on interest. Please, restore to them on this day their fields, their vineyards, their olive groves and their houses, and the hundredth of the money and the grain, 
the new wine and the oil that you are exacting as interest from them. To this they said, We shall make restoration, and from them we shall ask nothing back. We shall do precisely as you are saying. So I called the priests and made them swear to do according to this word. Also my bosom I shook out, and then said, In this manner may the true God shake out from his house and from his acquired property every man that does not carry out this word, and in this manner may he become shaken out and empty. To this all the congregation said, Amen. And they began to praise Jehovah, and the people proceeded to do according to this word. Another thing, from the day that he commissioned me to become their governor in the land of Judah, from the twentieth year to the thirty-second year of Artaxerxes the king, twelve years, I myself and my brothers did not eat the bread due the governor. As for the former governors that were prior to me, they had made it heavy upon the people, and they kept taking from them for bread and wine daily forty silver shekels. Also, their attendants themselves domineered over the people. As for me, I did not do that way on account of the fear of God. And what is more, in the work of this wall I took a hand, and not a field did we acquire, and all my attendants were collected together there for the work. And the Jews and the deputy rulers, a hundred and fifty men, and those coming in to us from the nations that were around us were at my table. As for that which happened to be made ready daily, one bull, six select sheep and birds were made ready for me, and once every ten days every sort of wine in abundance. And along with this the bread due the governor I did not demand, because the service upon this people was heavy. Do remember for me, O my God, for good, all that I have done in behalf of this people. Chapter 6 Now it came about that as soon as it was told to Sanballat and Tobiah and to Geshem the Arabian and to the rest of our enemies that I had rebuilt the wall and there had not been left in it a gap, although up to that time the doors themselves I had not set up in the gates, Sanballat and Geshem immediately sent to me, saying, Do come, and let us meet together by appointment in the villages of the valley plain of Ono. But they were scheming to do me harm. So I sent messengers to them, saying, It is a great work that I am doing, and I am not able to go down. Why should the work cease while I take off from it and have to go down to you? However, they sent me the same word four times, and I kept replying to them with the same word. Finally, Sanballat sent his attendant to me with the same word a fifth time, with an open letter in his hand. There was written in it, Among the nations it has been heard, and Geshem is saying it, that you and the Jews are scheming to rebel. That is why you are building the wall, and you are becoming a king to them, according to these words. And there are even prophets that you have appointed to call out concerning you throughout Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah. And now things like these will be told to the king. So now do come, and let us consult together. However, I sent to him, saying, Things such as you are saying have not been brought about, but it is out of your own heart that you are inventing them. For all of them were trying to make us afraid, saying, Their hands will drop down from the work so that it will not be done. But now strengthen my hands. And I myself entered the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deleah, the son of Mehetabel, while he was shut up. And he proceeded to say, Let us meet by appointment at the house of the true God, within the temple, and let us close the doors of the temple, for they are coming in to kill you. Even by night they are coming in to kill you. But I said, Should a man like me run away? And who is there like me that could enter into the temple and live? I shall not enter. So I investigated, and here it was not God that had sent him, but he had spoken this prophecy against me as Tobiah and Sanballat themselves had hired him. For this reason he had been hired in order that I might be afraid and do that way, and I should certainly sin, and it should certainly become in their possession a bad reputation in order that they might reproach me. Do remember, O oh my God, Tobiah and Sanballat, according to these deeds of each one, and also Noadiah the prophetess, and the rest of the prophets that were continually trying to make me afraid. 
At length the wall came to completion on the twenty-fifth day of Elal, in fifty-two days. And it came about that as soon as all our enemies heard of it, and all the nations that were around us got to see it, they at once fell very much in their own eyes, and they got to know that it was from our God that this work had been done. In those days also the nobles of Judah were making numerous their letters that were going to Tobiah, and those of Tobiah that were coming in to them. For many in Judah were sworn to him, for a son-in-law he was to Shechaniah the son of Ara, and Jehohanan his son had himself taken the daughter of Meshalem the son of Berechiah. Also good things about him they were continually saying before me, and my own words they were continually taking out to him. There were letters that Tobiah sent to make me afraid. Chapter 7 And it came about that as soon as the wall had been rebuilt, I at once set up the doors. Then there were appointed the gatekeepers and the singers and the Levites. And I went on to put in command of Jerusalem Hanani my brother and Hananiah the prince of the castle, for he was such a trustworthy man and feared the true God more than many others. So I said to them, the gates of Jerusalem should not be opened until the sun gets hot, and while they are standing by, they should shut the doors and bolt them, and station guards of the inhabitants of Jerusalem, each one at his own guard post, and each one in front of his own house. Now the city was wide and great, and there were few people inside it, and there were no houses built. But my God put it into my heart that I should collect together the nobles and the deputy rulers and the people, to get themselves enrolled genealogically. Then I found the book of genealogical enrollment of those who came up at the first, and found written in it, These are the sons of the jurisdictional district who came up out of the captivity of the exiled people, whom Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon had taken into exile, and who later returned to Jerusalem and to Judah, each to his own city. Those who came in with Zerubbabel, Jeshua, Nehemiah, Azariah, Rehemiah, Nehamani, Mordecai, Bilshan, Mispereth, Bigvi, Nehem, Baana. The number of the men of the people of Israel. The sons of Perosh, 2,172. The sons of Shephatiah, 372. The sons of Ara, 652. The sons of Pehath Moab, of the sons of Jeshua and Joab, 2,818 the sons of Elam, 1,254, the sons of Zatu, 845, the sons of Zakai, 760, the sons of Binui, 648, the sons of Bibai, 628, the sons of Asgad, 2,322, the sons of Adonikam, 667, the sons of Bigvi, 2,067, the sons of Aden, 655. The sons of Ata of Hezekiah, 98. The sons of Hashem, 328. The sons of Bezai, 324. The sons of Harif, 112. The sons of Gibeon, 95. The men of Bethlehem and Natopha, 188. The men of Anathoth, 128. The men of Bethazmaveth, 42. The men of Kiriath Jerim, Kephira, and Beeroth, seven hundred and forty three. The men of Ramah and Geba, six hundred and twenty one. The men of Michmas, a hundred and twenty two. The men of Bethel and Ai, a hundred and twenty three. The men of the other Nebo, fifty two. The sons of the other Elam, a thousand two hundred and fifty four. The sons of Harim, three hundred and twenty. The sons of Jericho, 345. The sons of Lod, Hadid, and Ono, 721. The sons of Senea, 3930. The priests. The sons of Judea, of the house of Jeshua, 973. The sons of Imma, 1052. The sons of Pashur, 1247. The sons of Harim, 1017. The Levites, the sons of Jeshua of Cadmiel, of the sons of Hodavah, seventy-four. The singers, the sons of Asaph, a hundred and forty-eight. The gatekeepers, the sons of Shalom, 
the sons of Ater, the sons of Talmon, the sons of Akab, the sons of Hatita, the sons of Shobai, a hundred and thirty-eight. The Nethanim, the sons of Zaiha, the sons of Hasufa, the sons of Tabeoth, the sons of Kiros, the sons of Sire, the sons of Padon, the sons of Labena, the sons of Hagaba, the sons of Salmai, the sons of Hanan, the sons of Giddel, the sons of Geha, the sons of Reiah, the sons of Rezin, the sons of Nekoda, the sons of Gazam, the sons of Azza, the sons of Pasia, the sons of Besai, the sons of Meunim, the sons of Nefushasim, the sons of Bakbuk, the sons of Hakufa, the sons of Hacher, the sons of Baslith, the sons of Mehida, the sons of Harsha, the sons of Bacos, the sons of Sisera, the sons of Tima, the sons of Neziah, the sons of Hatipha, the sons of the servants of Solomon, the sons of Sotai, the sons of Sophirith, the sons of Perida, the sons of Jaela, the sons of Darkon, the sons of Giddel, the sons of Shephatiah, the sons of Hatil, the sons of Pokereth Hazabaim, the sons of Amon. All the Nethanim and the sons of the servants of Solomon were three hundred and ninety-two. And these were the ones going up from Telmila, Telhasha, Kirab, Adon, and Imma. And they were not able to tell the house of their fathers and their origin, whether they were of Israel. The sons of Deleah, the sons of Tobiah, the sons of Nicoda, six hundred and forty-two. And of the priests, the sons of Habiah, the sons of Hakoz, the sons of Barzillai, who took a wife from the daughters of Barzillai, the Gileadite, and came to be called by their name. These were the ones that looked for their register, to establish their genealogy publicly, and it was not found, so that they were barred as polluted from the priesthood. Consequently, the Tershatha said to them that they should not eat from the most holy things until the priest with Urim and Thummim stood up. The entire congregation as one group was 42,360. Apart from their men slaves and their slave girls, these being 7,337, and they had 245 male singers and female singers. Their horses were 736, their mules 245. The camels were 435, the asses were 6,720. And there was a part of the heads of the paternal houses that gave to the work. The Tershatha himself gave to the treasure a thousand gold drachmas, fifty bowls, five hundred and thirty priests' robes. And there were some of the heads of the paternal houses that gave to the treasure for the work twenty thousand gold drachmas and two thousand two hundred silver miners. And what the rest of the people gave was twenty thousand gold drachmas and two thousand silver miners and sixty-seven priests' robes. And the priests and the Levites and the gatekeepers and the singers and some of the people and the Nethanim and all Israel took up dwelling in their cities. When the seventh month arrived, the sons of Israel were then in their cities. Chapter 8 And all the people proceeded to gather themselves as one man at the public square that was before the water gate. Then they said to Ezra the copyist to bring the book of the law of Moses, which Jehovah had commanded Israel. Accordingly, Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation of men as well as of women, and of all intelligent enough to listen, on the first day of the seventh month. And he continued to read aloud from it before the public square that is before the water gate, from daybreak till midday, in front of the men and the women and the other intelligent ones. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra the copyist kept standing upon a wooden podium which they had made for the occasion, and there were standing alongside him Mattathiah and Shema and Aniah and Uriah and Hilkiah and Maasiah to his right hand, and at his left Pediah and Mishael and Malkijah and Hashem and Hashbadana, Zechariah and Mishalem. And Ezra proceeded to open the book before the eyes of all the people, for he happened to be above all the people, and as he opened it all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed Jehovah, the true God, the Great One, at which all the people answered, Amen, Amen, with the lifting up of their hands. 
They then bowed low and prostrated themselves to Jehovah with their faces to the earth. And Jeshua and Benine and Sherebiah, Jamin, Akab, Shabbathai, Hodiah, Maasiah, Kelita, Azariah, Josabad, Hanan, Peleah, even the Levites were explaining the law to the people while the people were in a standing position. And they continued reading aloud from the book, from the law of the true God, it being expounded and there being a putting of meaning into it. And they continued giving understanding in the reading. And Nehemiah, that is, the Tershatha, and Ezra the priest, the copyist, and the Levites who were instructing the people, proceeded to say to all the people, This very day is holy to Jehovah your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people were weeping as they were hearing the words of the law. And he went on to say to them, Go, eat the fatty things and drink the sweet things, and send portions to the one for whom nothing has been prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord, and do not feel hurt, for the joy of Jehovah is your stronghold. And the Levites were ordering all the people to be silent, saying, Keep quiet, for this day is holy, and do not feel hurt. So all the people went away to eat and drink, and to send out portions, and to carry on a great rejoicing, for they had understood the words that had been made known to them. And on the second day the heads of the fathers of all the people, the priests and the Levites, gathered themselves together to Ezra the copyist, even to gain insight into the words of the law. Then they found written in the law that Jehovah had commanded by means of Moses that the sons of Israel should dwell in booths during the festival in the seventh month, and that they should make proclamation and cause a call to pass throughout all their cities and throughout Jerusalem, saying, Go out to the mountainous region and bring in olive leaves and the leaves of oil trees and myrtle leaves and palm leaves and the leaves of branchy trees to make booths according to what is written. And the people proceeded to go out and bring them in and make booths for themselves, each one upon his own roof, and in their courtyards, and in the courtyards of the house of the true God, and in the public square of the water gate, and in the public square of the gate of Ephraim. Thus all the congregation of those who had come back from the captivity made booths, and took up dwelling in the booths. For the sons of Israel had not done that way from the days of Joshua, the son of Nun, until that day so that there came to be very great rejoicing. And there was a reading aloud of the book of the law of the true God, day by day, from the first day until the last day. And they went on holding the festival seven days, and on the eighth day there was a solemn assembly according to the rule. Chapter 9 And on the twenty-fourth day of this month, the sons of Israel gathered themselves together with fasting and with sackcloth and dirt upon themselves. And the seed of Israel proceeded to separate themselves from all the foreigners, and to stand and make confession of their own sins and the errors of their fathers. Then they rose up at their place, and they read aloud from the book of the law of Jehovah their God, a fourth part of the day, and a fourth part they were making confession, and bowing down to Jehovah their God. And Jeshua and Benai, Kadmiel, Shebaniah, Bani, Sherebiah, Benai, and Canaanai proceeded to rise on the platform of the Levites and cry out with a loud voice to Jehovah their God. And the Levites, Jeshua and Kadmiel, Benai, Hashabniah, Sherebiah, Hodiah, Shebaniah, and Pethahiah went on to say, Rise! Bless Jehovah your God from time indefinite to time indefinite, and let them bless your glorious name, which is exalted above all blessing and praise. You are Jehovah alone. You yourself have made the heavens, even the heaven of the heavens and all their army, the earth and all that is upon it, the seas and all that is in them. And you are preserving all of them alive, and the army of the heavens are bowing down to you. You are Jehovah, the true God, who chose Abraham and brought him out of Ur of the Chaldeans, and constituted his name Abraham, and you found his heart faithful before you. So there was a contracting of the covenant with him to give him the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, and the Perizzites, 
and the Jebusites and the Gerkeshites to give it to his seed, and you proceeded to carry out your words because you are righteous. So you saw the affliction of our forefathers in Egypt and their outcry at the Red Sea you heard. Then you gave signs and miracles against Pharaoh and all his servants and all the people of his land, for you knew that they acted presumptuously against them, and you proceeded to make a name for yourself as at this day. And the sea you split before them, so that they crossed over through the midst of the sea on the dry land, and their pursuers you hurled into the depths like a stone in the strong waters. And by a pillar of cloud you led them by day, and by a pillar of fire by night, to light up for them the way in which they should go. And upon Mount Sinai you came down and spoke with them out of heaven, and went on to give them upright judicial decisions and laws of truth, good regulations and commandments. And your holy Sabbath you made known to them, and commandments and regulations, and a law you commanded them by means of Moses your servant." And bread from heaven you gave them for their hunger, and waters out of the crag you brought forth to them for their thirst. And you went on to say to them to enter and possess the land that you had lifted your hand in an oath to give to them. And they themselves, even our forefathers, acted presumptuously and proceeded to harden their neck, and they did not listen to your commandments. So they refused to listen and they did not remember your wonderful acts that you performed with them. But they hardened their neck, and appointed a head to return to their servitude in Egypt. But you are a God of acts of forgiveness, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abundant in loving kindness, and you did not leave them. Yes, when they had made for themselves a molten statue of a calf, and began to say, This is your God who led you up out of Egypt, and they went on to commit great acts of disrespect. You, even you in your abundant mercy, did not leave them in the wilderness. The pillar of cloud itself did not depart from over them by day to lead them in the way, nor the pillar of fire by night to light up for them the way in which they should go. And your good spirit you gave to make them prudent, and your manner you did not hold back from their mouth, and water you gave them for their thirst. And for forty years you provided them with food in the wilderness. They lacked nothing. Their very garments did not wear out, and their feet themselves did not become swollen. And you proceeded to give them kingdoms and peoples, and to apportion them piece by piece, so that they took possession of the land of Sihon, even the land of the king of Heshbon, and the land of Og, the king of Bashan. And their sons you made as many as the stars of the heavens. Then you brought them into the land that you had promised to their forefathers that they should enter to take possession. So their sons came in and took the land in possession, and you proceeded to subdue before them the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, and to give them into their hand, even their kings and the peoples of the land, to do with them according to their liking. And they went capturing fortified cities, and a fat soil, and taking in possession houses full of all good things, cisterns hewn out, vineyards and olive groves, and trees for food in abundance. And they began to eat, and to be satisfied, and to grow fat, and to luxuriate in your great goodness. However, they became disobedient and rebelled against you, and kept casting your law behind their back, and your own prophets they killed, who bore witness against them to bring them back to you, and they went on committing acts of great disrespect. For this you gave them into the hand of their adversaries, who kept causing them distress. But in the time of their distress they would cry out to you, and you yourself would hear from the very heavens, and in accord with your abundant mercy you would give them saviors who would save them out of the hand of their adversaries. But as soon as they were at rest, they would again do what is bad before you, and you would leave them to the hand of their enemies who would tread them down. Then they would return and call to you for aid, and you yourself would hear from the very heavens and deliver them in accord with your abundant mercy, time and again. 
Although you would bear witness against them to bring them back to your law, they themselves even acted presumptuously and did not listen to your commandments. And against your own judicial decisions they sinned, which if a man will do, he must also live by means of them. And they kept giving a stubborn shoulder, and their neck they hardened, and they did not listen. But you were indulgent with them for many years, and kept bearing witness against them by your spirit by means of your prophets, and they did not give ear. Finally, you gave them into the hand of the peoples of the lands, and in your abundant mercy you did not make an extermination of them or leave them, for you are a God gracious and merciful. And now, O our God, the God, great, mighty, and fear-inspiring, keeping the covenant and loving-kindness, do not let all the hardship that has found us, our kings, our princes, and our priests, and our prophets, and our forefathers, and all your people from the days of the kings of Assyria down to this day, seem little before you. And you are righteous as regards all that has come upon us, for faithfully is how you have acted but we are the ones that have done wickedly. As for our kings, our princes, our priests and our forefathers, they have not performed your law, nor paid attention to your commandments or to your testimonies with which you bore witness against them. And they themselves, during their kingdom and amid your abundant good things that you gave to them, and in the broad and fat land that you made available for them, they did not serve you, and did not turn back from their bad practices. Look, we are today slaves. And as for the land that you gave to our forefathers to eat its fruitage and its good things, look, we are slaves upon it. And its produce is abounding for the kings that you have put over us because of our sins, and over our bodies they are ruling, and over our domestic animals according to their liking, and we are in great distress. So in view of all this, we are contracting a trustworthy arrangement, both in writing and attested by the seal of our princes, our Levites, and our priests. Chapter 10 Now attesting it by seal, there were Nehemiah the Toshetha, the son of Hakaliah, and Zedekiah, Sariah, Azariah, Jeremiah, Pashher, Amariah, Malkijah, Hattush, Shebaniah, Malak, Harim, Meramoth, Obadiah, Daniel, Ginnathon, Barak, Meshalam, Abijah, Mijamin, Meaziah, Bilgai, and Shemaiah, these being the priests. Also the Levites, Jeshua, the son of Azaniah, Binuai, of the sons of Henadad, Cadmiel, and their brothers Shebaniah, Hodiah, Kelaita, Peleah, Hanan, Micah, Rehob, Hashabiah, Zachar, Sherebiah, Shebaniah, Hodiah, Benai, and Benainu. The heads of the people, Perosh, Pehath Moab, Elam, Zatu, Benai, Banai, Asgad, Bibai, Adonijah, Bigvi, Adin, Ata, Hezekiah, Azur, Hodiah, Hashem, Bezai, Harif, Anathoth, Nebai, Magpiash, Meshalam, Heza, Meshezabel, Zadok, Jadua, Pelatiah, Hanan, Aniah, Hoshia, Hananiah, Hashab, Halohesh, Pilha, Shobek, Reham, Hashabna, Measiah, and Ahijah, Hanan, Anan, Malak, Harim, Baana. As for the rest of the people, the priests, the Levites, the gatekeepers, the singers, the Nethanim, and everyone separating himself from the peoples of the lands to the law of the true God, their wives, their sons and their daughters, everyone having knowledge and understanding, they were adhering to their brothers, their majestic ones, and coming into liability to a curse and into an oath, to walk in the law of the true God, which had been given by the hand of Moses, the servant of the true God, 
and to keep and to perform all the commandments of Jehovah our Lord and his judicial decisions and his regulations, and that we should not give our daughters to the peoples of the land, and their daughters we should not take for our sons. As for the peoples of the land who were bringing in wares and every kind of cereal on the Sabbath day to sell, we should take nothing from them on the Sabbath or on a holy day, and we should forego the seventh year and the debt of every hand. Also, we imposed upon ourselves commandments to give, each of us, a third of a shekel yearly for the service of the house of our God, for the layer bread and the constant grain offering and the constant burnt offering of the Sabbaths, the new moons, for the appointed feasts and for the holy things and for the sin offerings to make atonement for Israel and all the work of the house of our God. Also, the lots we cast concerning the supply of the wood that the priests, the Levites, and the people should bring to the house of our God by the house of our forefathers at the appointed times, year by year, to burn upon the altar of Jehovah our God according to what is written in the law, and to bring the first ripe fruits of our ground and the first ripe fruits of all the fruitage of every sort of tree year by year to the house of Jehovah and the firstborn of our sons and of our domestic animals, according to what is written in the law, and the firstborn of our herds and of our flocks, to bring them to the house of our God, to the priests that were ministering in the house of our God. Also, the firstfruits of our coarse meal, and our contributions, and the fruitage of every sort of tree, new wine and oil we should bring to the priests, to the dining halls of the house of our God also the tenth from our soil to the Levites, as they, the Levites, are the ones receiving a tenth in all our agricultural cities. And the priest, the son of Aaron, must prove to be with the Levites when the Levites receive a tenth. And the Levites themselves should offer up a tenth of the tenth to the house of our God, to the dining halls of the supply house. For it is to the dining halls that the sons of Israel and the sons of the Levites should bring the contribution of the grain, the new wine and the oil, and there is where the utensils of the sanctuary and the priests that were ministering and the gatekeepers and the singers are, and we should not neglect the house of our God. Chapter 11 Now the princes of the people had their dwelling in Jerusalem, but as for the rest of the people, they cast lots to bring in one out of every ten to dwell in Jerusalem, the holy city, and the nine other parts in the other cities. Moreover, the people blessed all the men who volunteered to dwell in Jerusalem. And these are the heads of the jurisdictional district who dwelt in Jerusalem. But in the cities of Judah there dwelt each one in his own possession, in their cities, Israel, the priests, and the Levites, and the Nethanim, and the sons of the servants of Solomon. Also in Jerusalem there dwelt some of the sons of Judah and some of the sons of Benjamin. Of the sons of Judah... There were Athiah, the son of Aziah, the son of Zechariah, the son of Amariah, the son of Shephatiah, the son of Mahalalel, of the sons of Perez. And Maasiah, the son of Barak, the son of Colhose, the son of Haziah, the son of Adiah, the son of Joyarib, the son of Zechariah, the son of the Shalanite. All the sons of Perez who were dwelling in Jerusalem were 468 capable men. And these were the sons of Benjamin. Salu, the son of Meshalam, the son of Joed, the son of Pediah, the son of Koliah, the son of Maasiah, the son of Ithiel, the son of Jesheah, and after him Gabai and Salei, nine hundred and twenty-eight, and Joel, the son of Zikri, an overseer over them, and Judah, the son of Hasanua, over the city as second. Of the priests, Jedeah, the son of Joerib, Jakin, Seriah, the son of Hilkiah, the son of Meshalam, the son of Zadok, the son of Mereoth, the son of Ahitab, a leader of the house of the true God, and their brothers, the doers of the work of the house, 822. And Adiah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Pelaliah, the son of Amzai, the son of Zechariah, the son of Pashur, the son of Malchijah, and his brothers, heads of paternal houses, 242 and Amashsai, the son of Azarel, the son of Azai, the son of Meshilamoth, the son of Immer, and their brothers, mighty men of valor, a hundred and twenty-eight, and there was an overseer over them, Zabdiel, the son of the great ones. And of the Levites, 
Shemaiah, the son of Hashab, the son of Azraikam, the son of Hashabiah, the son of Bani, and Shabbathai, and Josabad, of the heads of the Levites, over the outside business of the house of the true God. And Mataniah himself, the son of Micah, the son of Zabdi, the son of Asaph, the conductor of the praise, singing, did the lording at prayer. And Bakbakiah was second of his brothers, and Abda, the son of Shamua, the son of Galal, the son of Juduthan. All the Levites in the holy city were two hundred and eighty-four. And the gatekeepers were Akab, Talmon, and their brothers who were keeping guard in the gates, a hundred and seventy-two. And the rest of Israel, of the priests and of the Levites, were in all the other cities of Judah, each one in his own hereditary possession. And the Nethanim were dwelling in Ophel, and Ziha and Gishpa were over the Nethanim. And the overseer of the Levites in Jerusalem was Azai, the son of Bani, the son of Hashabiah, the son of Mataniah, the son of Micah, of the sons of Asaph, the singers, concerning the work of the house of the true God. For there was a commandment of the king in behalf of them, and there was a fixed provision for the singers as each day required. And Pethahiah, the son of Meshezabel, of the sons of Zerah, the son of Judah, was at the side of the king for every matter of the people. And as regards the settlements in their fields, there were some of the sons of Judah that dwelt in Kiriath Arba and its dependent towns, and in Dibon and its dependent towns, and in Jechabseel and its settlements, and in Jeshua, and in Moleda, and in Beth Pelet, and in Hazashual, and in Beersheba and its dependent towns, and in Ziklag, and in Makona and its dependent towns, and in En-Rimon, and in Zorah, and in Jarmath, Zanoa, Adalam, and their settlements, Lachish, and its fields, Azika, and its dependent towns. And they took up camping from Beersheba, clear to the valley of Hinnom. And the sons of Benjamin were from Geba, Michmash, and Ijah, and Bethel, and its dependent towns, Anathoth, Nob, Ananiah, Hazor, Ramah, Gitaim, Hadid, Zeboim, Nabalat, Lod, and Ono, the valley of the craftsmen. And of the Levites there were divisions of Judah for Benjamin. Chapter 12 And these were the priests and the Levites that went up with Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and Jeshua, Sariah, Jeremiah, Ezra, Amariah, Malak, Hattash, Shechaniah, Rehum, Merimoth, Ido, Ginnathoi, Abijah, Mijamin, Maadiah, Bilgar, Shemaiah, and Joarib, Jedeah, Salu, Amok, Hilkiah, Jedea. These were the heads of the priests and their brothers in the days of Jeshua. And the Levites were Jeshua, Binuai, Cadmiel, Sherebiah, Judah, Mataniah, over the giving of thanks, he and his brothers. And Bakbakiah and Anai, their brothers, were opposite them for guard duties. Jeshua himself became father to Joachim, and Joachim himself became father to Eliashib, and Eliashib to Joiada. And Joiada himself became father to Jonathan, and Jonathan himself became father to Jadua. And in the days of Joachim there happened to be priests, the heads of the paternal houses, for Sariah, Mariah, for Jeremiah, Hananiah, for Ezra, Meshalem, for Amariah, Jehohanan, for Malachi, Jonathan, for Shebaniah, Joseph, for Harim, Adna, for Mereoth, Helkai, for Ido, Zechariah, for Ginnathon, Meshalem, for Abijah, Zikri, for Meniamin, for Moadiah, Piltai, for Bilgah, Shamua, for Shemaiah, Jehonathan, and for Joerib, Matinai, for Judea, Azai, for Salei, Kalai, for Amok, Eber, for Hilkiah, Hashabiah, for Judea, Nathanel. The Levites in the days of Eliashib, Joeda and Johanan and Jadua were recorded as heads of paternal houses, also the priests, down to the kingship of Darius the Persian. The sons of Levi as heads of the paternal houses were recorded in the book of the affairs of the times, even down till the days of Johanan the son of Eliashib. 
and the heads of the Levites were Hashabiah, Sherebiah, and Jeshua, the son of Cadmiel, and their brothers opposite them, to offer praise and give thanks according to the commandment of David the man of the true God, guard group corresponding with guard group. Mataniah and Bakbakiah, Obadiah, Meshalem, Talmon, Akab, were keeping guard as gatekeepers, a guard group by the stores of the gates. These were in the days of Joachim, the son of Jeshua, the son of Josadak, and in the days of Nehemiah, the governor, and Ezra, the priest, the copyist. And at the inauguration of the wall of Jerusalem, they looked for the Levites to bring them out of all their places to Jerusalem, to carry on an inauguration and a rejoicing, even with thanksgivings and with song, cymbals and stringed instruments and with harps. And the sons of the singers proceeded to gather themselves even from the district, from all around Jerusalem, and from the settlements of the Natophathites, and from Beth Gilgal, and from the fields of Geba and Asmeveth, for there were settlements that the singers had built for themselves all around Jerusalem. And the priests and the Levites proceeded to cleanse themselves, and cleanse the people and the gates and the wall. Then I brought up the princes of Judah upon the wall. Further, I appointed two large thanksgiving choirs and processions, and the one was walking to the right upon the wall to the gate of the ash heaps. And Hoshiah and half of the princes of Judah began to walk behind them, also Azariah, Ezra, and Meshalem, Judah and Benjamin, and Shemaiah, and Jeremiah. Also of the sons of the priests with the trumpets, Zechariah, the son of Jonathan, the son of Shemaiah, the son of Mataniah, the son of Micaiah, the son of Zachar, the son of Asaph, and his brothers Shemaiah and Azarel, Milalai, Gilalai, Mai, Nathanel, and Judah, Hanani, with the instruments of song of David, the man of the true God, and Ezra the copyist before them. And at the fountain gate and straight ahead of them, they went up on the stairway of the city of David, by the ascent of the wall above the house of David, and clear to the water gate to the east. And the other thanksgiving choir was walking in front, and I after it. Also half of the people upon the wall, up over the tower of the bake ovens, and on to the broad wall, and up over the gate of Ephraim, and on to the gate of the old city, and clear to the fish gate, and the tower of Hananel, and the tower of Mia, and on to the sheep gate. And they came to a stand at the gate of the guard. At length the two thanksgiving choirs came to a stand at the house of the true God, also I and half of the deputy rulers with me, and the priests Eliakim, Maasiah, Meniamin, Micaiah, Elioenai, Zechariah, Hananiah with the trumpets, and Maasiah and Shemaiah and Eleazar and Azai and Jehohanan and Malchijah and Elam and Ezer. And the singers with Israhiah, the overseer, kept making themselves heard. And they proceeded to sacrifice on that day great sacrifices, and to rejoice. For the true God himself caused them to rejoice with great joy. And also the women and the children themselves rejoiced, so that the rejoicing of Jerusalem could be heard far away. Further, there were appointed on that day men over the halls for the stores, for the contributions, for the firstfruits and for the tenths, to gather into them out of the fields of the cities, the portions called for by the law for the priests and the Levites. For the rejoicing of Judah was because of the priests and of the Levites who were in attendance. And they began taking care of the obligation of their God and the obligation of the purification, also the singers and the gatekeepers, according to the commandment of David and Solomon his son. For in the days of David and Asaph, in bygone time, there were heads of the singers and the song of praise and thanksgivings to God. And all Israel during the days of Zerubbabel and during the days of Nehemiah were giving the portions of the singers and of the gatekeepers according to the daily need and were sanctifying them to the Levites. And the Levites were sanctifying them to the sons of Aaron. Chapter 13 On that day there was a reading from the book of Moses in the ears of the people. And there was found written in it that the Ammonite and the Moabite should not come into the congregation of the true God to time indefinite. For they had not met the sons of Israel with bread and with water, but went hiring against them Balaam to call down evil upon them. However, our God changed the malediction into a benediction. 
So it came about that as soon as they heard the law, they began to separate all the mixed company from Israel. Now before this, Eliashib the priest in charge of a dining hall of the house of our God was a relative of Tobiah, and he proceeded to make for him a large dining hall where previously they were regularly putting the grain offering, the frankincense, and the utensils and the tenth of the grain, the new wine and the oil, to which the Levites and the singers and the gatekeepers are entitled, and the contribution for the priests. And during all this time I did not happen to be in Jerusalem, for in the thirty-second year of Artaxerxes, the king of Babylon, I came to the king, and some time later I asked leave of absence from the king. Then I came to Jerusalem and got to notice the badness that Eliashib had committed for Tobiah by making for him a hall in the courtyard of the house of the true God. And it seemed very bad to me, so I threw all the furniture of Tobiah's house outside the dining hall. After that I said the word, and they cleansed the dining halls, and I proceeded to put back there the utensils of the house of the true God, with the grain offering and the frankincense. And I got to find out that the very portions of the Levites had not been given them, so that the Levites and the singers doing the work went running off, each one to his own field. And I began to find fault with the deputy rulers and say, Why has the house of the true God been neglected? Consequently, I collected them together and stationed them at their standing place. And all Judah, for their part, brought in the tenth of the grain and of the new wine and of the oil to the stores. Then I put Shelemiah the priest and Zadok the copyist and Pediah of the Levites in charge of the stores. And under their control there was Hanan the son of Zachar, the son of Mataniah, for they were considered faithful, and upon them it devolved to do the distributing to their brothers. Do remember me, O my God, concerning this, and do not wipe out my acts of loving-kindness that I have performed in connection with the house of my God and the guardianship of it. In those days I saw in Judah people treading wine-presses on the Sabbath and bringing in grain-heaps and loading them upon asses, and also wine, grapes and figs and every sort of burden, and bringing them into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. And I proceeded to bear witness against them on the day of their selling provisions. And the Tyrians themselves dwelt in the city, bringing in fish and every sort of merchandise, and making sales on the Sabbath to the sons of Judah and in Jerusalem. So I began to find fault with the nobles of Judah, and say to them, What is this bad thing that you are doing, even profaning the Sabbath day? Was it not this way that your forefathers did, so that our God brought upon us all this calamity, and also upon this city? Yet you are adding to the burning anger against Israel by profaning the Sabbath. And it came about that as soon as the gates of Jerusalem had grown shadowy before the Sabbath, I immediately said the word, and the doors began to be closed. I said further that they should not open them until after the Sabbath, and some of my own attendants I stationed at the gates that no burden might come in on the Sabbath day. Consequently, the traders and the sellers of every sort of merchandise spent the night outside Jerusalem once and a second time. Then I proceeded to bear witness against them and say to them, Why are you spending the night in front of the wall? If you do it again, a hand I shall lay on you. From that time on, they did not come on the Sabbath. And I went on to say to the Levites that they should be regularly purifying themselves and coming in, keeping guard of the gates to sanctify the Sabbath day. This also do remember to my account, O my God, and do feel sorry for me according to the abundance of your loving kindness. Also in those days I saw the Jews that had given a dwelling to Ashdodite, Ammonite, and Moabite wives. And as for their sons, half were speaking Ashdodite, and there were none of them knowing how to speak Jewish, but in the tongue of the different peoples. And I began to find fault with them, and call down evil upon them, and strike some men of them, and pull out their hair, and make them swear by God, You should not give your daughters to their sons, and you should not accept any of their daughters for your sons or yourselves. Was it not because of these that Solomon the king of Israel sinned? And among the many nations there proved to be no king like him. And loved of his God he happened to be, so that God constituted him king over all Israel, even him the foreign wives caused to sin. And is it not something unheard of for you to commit all this great badness in acting unfaithfully against our God by giving a dwelling to foreign wives? 
And one of the sons of Joiada, the son of Eliashib, the high priest, was a son-in-law of Sanballat, the Horonite. So I chased him away from me. Do remember them, O my God, on account of the defilement of the priesthood, and the covenant of the priesthood, and of the Levites. And I purified them from everything foreign, and proceeded to assign duties to the priests and to the Levites, each one in his own work, even for the supply of the wood at appointed times, and for the first ripe fruits. Do remember me, O my God, for good.